we want to be very careful here, uh, as you know. Um, we're just not going to speak. It is really the question that you're asking me is related to everything that is happening currently right now uh, with the Department of Justice and even ODNI. As they, as I said, we're aware of the letter. We did not have any advanced knowledge of the of the letter. Uh, right now, we are at this time. We're just not going to make comments on any questions related to this, any underlying questions, any content. I, I just the gaslighting and, and the lying has yeah. just got to stop. Presidential Records Act. Here's the language. The president has the statutory authority to determine whether something is a personal record or if something goes to the National Archives. It's the Presidential Records Act. They can declassify something a a anytime yeah. they want to. Matter of fact, if the president says something while in elected office from the from a podium or from the briefing room where Corrine Jean-Pierre was just right there, that it is then declassified. Yeah, that, well, that's how that process works when you're the president. The administration is great at dodging questions. You know, we had the Saki dodge, but this press secretary, um, if she, she doesn't dodge the question, she says, oh, go ask somebody else. Yeah. This, this, uh, this um, department will talk to you about it because they just, she doesn't have answers. What I don't like is nothing gets a simple answer. And some right. things deserve, some things warrant just a simple answer you know a couple of words that that'll cover it and then move on um, okay this was interesting the New York Times a day ago talking about the FBI's they're calling it a document inquiry which is <laughs> such a sanitized way of, of instead of saying raid they say this document inquiry poses unparalleled tests for the Justice Department they went on to say that the Justice Department is now dealing with one of the most challenging complicated criminal investigations in recent memory so we were talking about this Allison I don't think the FBI ever thought it would get this kind of attention. They knew yeah. that 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 conservative America wouldn't be thrilled with a raid on Donald Trump's house, but I don't think they thought this was going to happen. So the question is, what do they do now? Yeah, right? look, and they didn't expect Democrats to come out and say that that they should not have done it this way. They were not expecting the backlash. I think they expected to go in, get what they needed, bring charges against a former president, and then be done. But yeah. it's not going that way so far. Yeah, 22 days removed uh, from the raid. All right, uh, for more, let's welcome in a former New York Congresswoman and Independent Women's Forum board member, Nan Hayworth, back with us. And the GOP nominee in the 8th Congressional District in the great state of Pennsylvania, um, Jim Bognett, back with us. Uh, Jim, good to have you back on. Good morning. Thanks for having me. We've got a former member of Congress and an aspiring <laughs> member of Congress. Um, it's funny, the 8th Congressional District, if I'm not mistaken, that's the home of Scranton, Pennsylvania, Joe Biden's hometown, Harp Scrabble Town, right? It is indeed, but... Joe don't know Scranton. He doesn't know what he's dealing with up here. We are hungry for change here in Joe Biden's home district. Do people believe all the stories about corn pop up there? Well, we can't believe that, that this guy is representing himself as being from Scranton. He's from Delaware. We know he's from Delaware. Um, let, me, let me play you a soundbite. <laughs> this is John Fetterman, who's running for the Senate, Democrat, down in Pennsylvania. Had a stroke uh, right around the time of the primary. Um, we know he gets a, a, an allowance from his parents, lived with his parents, bought a, sift, a house off his sister for a dollar. I don't know if Pennsylvania voters are really aware of this. I don't think people tune in until after Labor Day. But here's John Vetterman talking about voter ID in Pennsylvania, the Keystone State. Listen. I am horrified that Republicans are going to attempt to change Pennsylvania's constitution to make voter ID mandatory in Pennsylvania which, of course, disproportionately will impact people of color. Uh, Jim, what, what, what's, your, what's your make on where things lie politically in Pennsylvania right now? Well, my district, PA, is the center of the political universe this week. We have Biden in town today to talk nonsense, uh, for him to claim that he's helping the American people, but he isn't. And then we have President Trump in town on Saturday to do a rally for me and Dr. Oz and Doug Mastriano. Uh, I think... Everybody realizes that this is one of the most important seats in the nation. When we beat Joe Biden's lapdog, Matt Cartwright, who votes with him 100 percent of the time here in Biden's so-called hometown, it's going to send an unmistakable message that the American people have turned their back on Joe Biden. They know that what he's done to us on inflation, on rising energy prices, on an open border is really hurting the nation, and they want to change. Everybody in Northeast Pennsylvania tells me we need a change. We can't keep going in this liberal direction. Yeah, I wonder, Nan, if the turnout will be different uh, for those coming to see President Biden in Pennsylvania and those <laughs> coming to see, uh, to see former President point. Trump. Uh, but let's stay with Pennsylvania, Nan, because John Fetterman um, is not going to be where Joe Biden is. This seems to be... Allison, he has a scheduling conflict. He does. I mean, maybe a dentist appointment. We saw yes. that happen with Stacey Abrams. This seems to be a common theme with Democrats. 
Well, you know, you got to keep your teeth in shape. And, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. Uh, John Fetterman has uh, has more than a scheduling conflict, obviously, as his problem. He's basically Joe Biden without the bespoke suits. He can't get a sentence out straight. And when he does, it's something that, frankly, uh, voters uh, who are paying attention, and I agree with Rob, they're not really paying attention until after Labor Day. Uh, you know, it's not something they want to hear. Uh, Jim was talking about rising energy prices. Uh, Pennsylvania has an amazing uh, natural gas industry. John Fetterman wants to shut it down. And interestingly enough, of course, uh, so does Joe Biden, which is fascinating because as we speak, Russia continues to pump out uh, oil and gas at record prices. Uh, if Joe Biden would, from the national level, take the constraints off American domestic energy production, we could shut down Putin and provide incredible relief for hardworking Americans. Why won't they do it? Why won't Biden do it? Why won't Fetterman do it? That's what we should be asking. Fetterman is talking about voter ID, Nan. Like, I, I can't believe we're still, we're still talking about this. This, by the way, the hypocrisy. Think about this. Stacey Abrams, who also had a scheduling conflict with Joe Biden when he went to Georgia, uh, another close race. But uh, the voter ID thing, showing an ID when you vote, I, I can't believe this is even still a topic, still an issue. Um, Jim, I, I do want to talk about these two different rallies. So, Joe, do you expect a big crowd for the sitting president when he goes to Pennsylvania in, in Scranton. This is a town that he, he always talks about, Scranton, Pennsylvania. I expect there's going to be a crowd of Republicans and independents that are going to be screaming at him saying, what have you done to our country? Uh, I don't expect him to get anywhere near the crowd that President Trump gets on Saturday. We have been uh, deluged by requests for tickets for the Trump rally on Saturday. Uh, this is uh, America first country up here in Northeast Pennsylvania. President Trump won this district twice. And I can't tell you how unpopular Joe Biden is. You know, the Biden Cartwright ticket, as I call it, my opponent is a gentleman named Matt Cartwright. He's right. a trial lawyer, votes with Biden all the time. I think what you're gonna see is a tremendous outpouring of support for the America First agenda on Saturday. And today, we've been pumping up our website, beatscrantonjoe.com, beatscrantonjoe.com. Send a message, we don't want Scranton Joe coming here to Northeast Pennsylvania. All right. Mm -hmm. Good to have you on, uh, Jim. We'll all be watching on uh, on Saturday night. Uh, again, the 8th Congressional District, Jim Bognett versus Matt Cartwright, uh, 69 days from today. We are getting in closer and closer. Nan, always great to have you on. Good to see you. We'll do it again soon. Thank, Thank you. you.